Hello, my team and I have been asked to create a video to help you with an area of your first year physics course. We have decided to cover types of bonding, cohesive energy calculations and crystal defects. These topics form part of your thermal physics course and we hope that you find this helpful if you are struggling. The properties of matter segment of this course is often underestimated by students, myself included, and hopefully this video goes some way to resolving your issues. Before we get down to the physics, here's a short clip of me using phenol salicate powder to make some crystals to show you, the show you the applications of what we're going to tell you about. If you were to look at these crystals through a microscope, you would see a lot of what we have described in this video. After this, James will talk to you about types of bonding. So let's go over the basics. What are the types of bonding in crystalline structures? Well, to start with, we have covalent bonding, characterised by the sharing of electrons between atoms. In our example here, we've got carbon atoms sharing four electrons to form diamond crystals. Secondly, we have ionic bonding. Now, ionic bonds, we've got atoms that give over electrons to other atoms. For example, here, we've got sodium, which gives an electron to chlorine, forming a negative and a positive ion which attract each other, forming our ionic crystal lattice. For example, here we've got NaCl. We have metallic crystals. Now, metal atoms are special because their outer electron shell is free to move within the solid. There's therefore electrostatic force of attraction between this sea of free electrons and the positive metal ions. We've got an example here, we've got copper. Finally, we have found the valence interactions. These happen between molecules or atoms where there's a redistribution of charge forming a dipole across the molecule or atom. We get a positive and a negative end and these are attracted to each other forming a bond. These are normally very weak and normally happen between gases at average room temperature, like CO2. The types of bonds in a material and the position of each atom or ion within the solid determine a very important property which is cohesive energy, which is defined as the energy required to separate all atoms to infinity. To calculate it, we need to think about each individual particle within the material. So we think about the potential energy per atom, U. U is a function of R0, where R0 is the minimum distance between two atoms in the material, so it's the equilibrium distance. The cohesive energy per atom will be negative that, so it's cohesive energy per atom equals minus U. To calculate the potential function at our knot, we need to think about which bond is um, keeping the solid together. So if it's an ionic bond, we will use a Coulomb interaction formula. If it's covalent bonds, we can use a Morse potential. If it's Van der Waals bonds, we can use leonard jones potentials. And if we have a metal, we need to think about a many-body interactions model that um, deals with the position of each um, atom and ion and the angles between them. So here is an example on how to calculate cohesive energy for a material. This is a material that is arranged in simple cubic structure. So there's a cube and uh, the atoms are at each corner and they are at a minimum distance R0. And that's the nearest neighbour distance. So if we think about that atom, the nearest neighbours would be at distance R0 and there's six of them. And the second nearest neighbours will be at a distance root 2 of R0. There will be third nearest neighbours as well and fourth nearest neighbours as well. But we need to think about how strong the bond is. So if we have an interaction that only affects the first nearest neighbours, we calculate the cohesive energy of the solid by thinking about the potential energy per atom, potential at R0, times the number of nearest neighbours, which in this case is 6, divided by 2 because each bond will be shared between two atoms. So that gives us minus 3 V of R0. If we have a stronger interaction that affects the second nearest neighbours as well, then we need to take account of the potential energy at the second nearest neighbours distance through 2 of R0 times the number of nearest or second nearest neighbours, which is 12 in this case, divided by 2 because each bond is shared, plus the cohesive energy due to the first nearest neighbours. So in this case, the cohesive energy of the solid would be minus 3 V of R0 minus 6 V of root 2 of R0. 
So now we're moving on to crystal defects. First of all, we have a vacancy, which is an atom missing from a lattice site, as seen in number one. Next, we have an interstitial, which is an atom sitting in between two lattice sites, as shown in number two. Third of all, we have a substitutional impurity, which is a different atom replacing the original atom of the crystal, as shown in number three. And finally, we have interstitial impurity, which is a different atom sitting in between two lattice sites. Now you might be wondering, what is the importance of all these crystal defects? Well, as you can see, there's many more ways of arranging the atoms inside this crystal, so the entropy of this crystal increases. And secondly, we can use substitutional impurities such as number three to create semiconductors that we use in the real world today. We hope you found this educational and informative, and we hope that it helps you pass your exams. Good luck.